Wisconsinized coverage of Campaign 2014 is being brought to you by the Wisconsin Hospital Association. For over 90 years, a valued voice supporting Wisconsin hospitals in communities like yours. Wisconsin I coverage of the 2014 elections continue. We're, we're interviewing Mr. Bill Ingram of Durand. He's a Republican candidate in the 31st Senate District. And just a reminder, Wisconsin I thanks the Wisconsin Hospital Association for helping make these interviews possible. Mr. Ingram, welcome to Wisconsin I. Thank you. Tell us about your background and qualifications, sir. Okay. Well, basically, I was born in Durand, Wisconsin. Grew up on a dairy farm. Did all the childhood things. I did Boy Scouts, FFA, 4-H. Had some cows and affairs. Since I got out of high school, I got my pilot's license, joined the Air Force. Uh, very quickly cross-trained into the OSI. If you've ever watched CSI or any of those yes. movies, that's what I did. Uh, we went over to Germany. We were had a body. I ran a bodyguard team that ran anybody that was a four-star general and above going around Europe. I spent a year over there came back to the states and then I got on the local Duran Police Department. Well, I, I went to the University of Wisconsin, Eau Claire, got a degree in computers, MIS, uh, started uh, doing a little bit of business as a vice president with a computer company. We wrote comparative rating software for insurance companies. And then I went back to the University of Eau Claire where I was a police sergeant there for 17 years. I spent most of my time doing computer crime and a lot of the technical stuff there. After that, my wife Pam wanted to see the country, so we bought a semi and hit all 48 states the first year. Uh, as we progressed into that, my dad's Alzheimer's got worse. Eventually, Pam stayed home with him, and then finally, I stayed home with him. And the thing that really got me into politics or campaigning was how ridiculous the human services laws are dealing with people who are elderly with dementia trying to figure these out. I mean, being a police officer, I know the law very well. I have no clue when I started this of what goes on over on this human services side. So I've really kind of dedicated the last few years of my life to working with people that are elderly, disabled, and trying to sort through these laws, kind of cut through some of the red tape, so to speak to help the people get some of the services they need or deserve or expected to have and um, just kind of one thing just so built these the, the, your, your passion and your focus on home services and health care home services is a motiva motivating factor in your running right well let's start there uh, okay. how would you fix the most common problems not all of them because I don't want to take up the whole interview but what, what's some common sense solutions to the problem sir well, well one of the biggest problems that they have overall is the mass of funding I mean when I started with the county board in Pepin County on the Human Services Committee we had 33 different sources of income coming in from the federal level from the county level and even some local funding and a lot of that money is earmarked that you can only use it for a certain thing and in a small county like Pepin County, if we don't have somebody that year that needs to go to Mendota or something like that, well, that money might just sit there in the budget, but we can't use it. Next year, you might have two or three people mm -hmm. for the same. And I just use that as one service. There's a ton of different services there, but when you earmark just small amounts of money for a one-time event, you have two. We, you kind of run in the same thing with the snow plows and the blizzards and things like that. But you also have a lot of things where the government in their attempt to make smaller government outsourced things to private company. Now, if we're doing a project at the county level, we don't like it, we can make a vote on the county board and we can change it. However, when you've outsourced a, a contract between a department that is underneath a committee, the elected officials don't have any say over it or they say, well, we got complaints, we want this fixed, and this com the company holds up the little contract and says, I got a contract that says I can keep on doing this. See. And they're just, you know, anything that they don't have to do of giving those services back to the people is profit. The other big problem is a lot of these companies aren't even, you know, in Wisconsin. They're multi-state corporations. Frequently when I talk to these people, they're in West Virginia, Arizona, and these are simply the call centers. The other thing is if we took some of these call centers and took them out of Madison and moved them to the smaller communities, first of all, you wouldn't have the expensive office space you do in Madison here. But towns like Durand that are losing our farmers and all this could use something put in there and we could have a call center that would be a lot cheaper, the same training, but you can call up whether it be a question on human services, your DNR license, your driver's license, things like that. 
Um, so the, you, the, would, you would like to use your county expertise and bring it to state government to try to fix some of these, right. especially uh, these problems that are especially in the rural areas. Correct? Right. The, the main money going to the states goes to the counties. That's where the rubber meets the road. But there's very few representatives either in the assembly or the, on the, at the Senate that are still on the county board. They may have done it in the past, mm -hmm. but they aren't actively involved. Every year laws change and they just get further and further and further away from Okay. where the money it meets the road really okay but as a, a Senate member uh, you'd be addressing a lot of a lot of different issues let me ask you about some of those okay um, private school vouchers and choice yeah they've, they've been expanded statewide going beyond the city of Milwaukee and mm -hmm. Racine excuse me what do you think should be the future of private school vouchers and choice I think that I, I'll uh, throw this out here. I think that X amount of dollars ought to be tagged to the school, the kid, and the kid can go anywhere he wants to. Anyway. If he wants to go to private school, he can go Charter, to private anything. Virtual. Yeah, and okay. the, let the the schools provide the services and the competition, and draw the kids in. If the kid don't like it, he don't think he's getting a good thing there. Well, then this parent can take him someplace else. But I think the kid, the money should go with the kid. There's a big debate in the Capitol over Common Core standards. Have you followed that, sir? Uh, I've followed parts of Common Core, yes. Uh, do you, uh, do you I'm opposed to Common Core. You're opposed to Common Core because? Yeah. Well, basically, the fact that it's it's common. I'm a local guy. I think we our local schools ought to be able to modify, regulate, and do some some things. Um, Common Core is the big brother looking down and saying, "This is what we got to do," and they're trying to do a one thing here. You know, what's in this? Well, okay, New York has the same standards as Pepin County does. Yes. So that's what I'm opposed to. Uh, let me ask you a follow-up question on health care. Uh, Governor Walker and leaders of both the Assembly and the Senate said. Federal government, you want to offer us money to expand MA benefits. We don't want your money. We don't think you're good. You're 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 going to continue to pay 100 uh, 100 percent. Wise decision or unwise decision? I think it's a wise decision. I wise mean, decision. you look at who the gov who is the federal government tried to help? The American Indians, the disabled, senior citizens, people on welfare. You know, are any of those doing very good at all? No. I mean, we need to we need to first of all stop giving so much tax revenue to the federal government, keep it more, I don't care if the state wants to raise theirs, if we can take it from the feds, but why should we pay our money to the feds and then have to beg it back and then have all these restrictions put on it or whatever? I mean, there's so many states that are misusing the monies as it is, like California with all the illegal immigrants and everything else, and they're going bankrupt. Why should we, who's doing things right here behind Governor Walker, be bailing out these other liberal Overall states that you know just kind of keep spending. Transportation funding. There's a projected six hundred and fifty million dollar deficit in the next budget. Yes. 2015, 2017. Do you think we're going to have to delay some of these highway projects or raise taxes or what else? Well, you know, when you, first the basic when you start over projecting, then you need to start cutting costs. Now there are a few things that are fundamentally problems. For the example, costs of everything keep going up, but the fuel tax, even though we have the highest fuel tax in most of the country, is a set dollar amount. It, we pay the same fuel tax if our fuel is two dollars a gallon or if it's four dollars a gallon, but our costs to our county highway crews keep going up because they have to you know pay the higher price fuel but they're not getting any more to do that the hybrid cars and some of these other things that aren't burning as much fuel mm -hmm. cost more we have a highway system that is full full of holes it needs to be repaired and um, you know something needs to be done but there's a lot of projects that can go on the wayside and also from what I understand the zoo interchange in Milwaukee is a 600 million dollar project and that's more than the the full highway pro our budgets of most of the other counties in the state. Yes, it is. So, you know, we got to stop just keep funneling everything into Madison until they can get a control over, or not Madison, until Milwaukee, until they can get kind of a control. And we need to stop pu start pushing that no button. No, no. No. Would, would you push the no button on the idea of raising our uh, gas tax or what you and I pay for our license plate fees, sir? I already did um, go against, the, in Pepin County, they wanted to do a $10 wheel tax to cover up some expenses. And I started a petition, we got that stopped. I would not have a problem with the fuel tax being a percentage tax instead of a flat 
tax, but that's about as far as I would go for raising taxes. Uh, recently, Federal Judge Crabb um, ruled that uh, Wisconsin's constitutional ban on same-sex marriage is unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. Do you have any reaction to that, sir? It's, it's a process that's leaning more and more to a way that I just um, religiously, physiologically, or whatever, don't agree with, uh, but you know, I'm going to stand firm on the um, way with the way that it's currently written, and that's about all there is. I mean, it's a yes or no answer. I'm going to stay with the traditional the, marriage traditional between a man marriage. and a woman. Um, okay. Um, uh, two candidates for attorney general say first offense drunken driving should be a crime. You're a former police officer. What do you think, sir? No, absolutely not. Why? Uh, there's so many people that get caught up in a one-time deal. A crime is a crime that affects your life forever. People make mistakes. There should be a way out of a mistake. I mean, there are even some things of former felons that I've talked to that did a felony 25 years ago, and they've been good members of the community, but they still have that following around. When you tag somebody like that, you tag their income opportunity and their potential and everything else for the rest of their life. Um, there's debate both in Washington and in our capital, sir, raising the minimum wage. Your position? I'd like to see it lowered. Lowered? I mean, there's people out there that aren't worth, honestly, aren't worth paying seven bucks an hour. They might work for two dollars an hour to get something or, you know, shovel a sidewalk for 15, 20 minutes and you give them a few bucks. But, but when you talk about all the liabilities and everything else that go in with hiring somebody, some of these people aren't doing But you also, they mix up minimum wage with living wage. I mean, a minimum wage is my grandson taking his first job, wants to go out and flip some burgers at a fast food store. Okay. Uh, you know, you, you're not, it's not a wage for a family of four to be living on. So there is a difference. Now, the problem comes is some businesses, as soon as somebody gets a little experience, they fire them because they want to raise and they hire somebody new. The other problem that we get is with all the illegal immigrants, people want illegals made legal residents. The day they become legal residents, they have to apply for, or the business has to conform with all of our U.S. citizen regulations. All those people will be out of a job and they'll bring in a whole new batch of illegals because they'll be under the same system. If we could lower minimum wage, you make the same amount of money by working 40 hours a week instead of 20 hours a week or so on and so forth. You just put more time in, you make more money, and these people don't have to work two or three different jobs because of the 30 hour here, they can only put in here, or they can only work, part. you know, these people are running all over the place and they don't have any home time. Just uh, two final questions. Uh, number one, is there any major campaign issue that I haven't asked you about that, that you're running on? Um, abortion is a big one. You abortion? Know, I, I'm totally opposed to abortion. Okay. I mean, when you see the millions of, of children killed every year from abortion and then they want to take our tax dollars to fund this, I, I find that appalling. The other thing is I'm a very, very strong proponent of concealed carry because you see all these shootings constantly. And why do they keep happening? They want to take guns away from one person. If there were 10 people there with a gun, you know, the stuff, there's somebody there to protect the people. Right now, there's nobody there. Each one of these things, if you look at every single one, why did it happen? There was nobody there to stop them. And then finally, do you want to highlight any uh, contrast or differences with your primary opponent or opponents? I'm not going to go in to tit for tat with Mel. He, okay. You know, we have the same objective. It's to bring a different philosophy to the Capitol. Very good. Mr. Bill Ingram of Duran is a Republican candidate in the 31st State Senate District. Mr. Ingram, thanks for coming to Madison, talking to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Yeah.